let me show you some tips for improving the battery life on Realme GT 7T. So first of all, what we can do is of course open settings and we're going to start with the battery settings as I think these are one of the most important settings that we can go through. I want to of course mention the battery mode over here. In this case, of course, we don't have to use the power saving mode or the super power saving mode all the time. However, they can be quite crucial in specific scenarios where you need to extend the battery life in a given moment. Besides that, we also have some automations like for the power saving mode over here, we can automatically enable power saving mode when we reach specific battery percentage. You can also go through these options like sleep standby optimization to make sure that they are enabled, video battery saver, and we also have the battery management for apps. Um, but I believe these are the most important ones. We also have the app freezer as well. Now, over here we have the GT mode, which of course, if it's enabled all the time, it will definitely increase the power consumption. So you don't want to use it all the time, only if the performance of the phone is lacking, especially of course for gaming, mostly for gaming, when the when games are not performing well on this phone, you can use this feature in order to increase the performance, but you don't want to use it all the time. Another thing is, of course, the battery health. Over here, we can find the information about the maximum capacity, which naturally, after some time, it will drop. But of course, we can slow this process down if we stick to these tips that I mentioned in this video. And one of the things that you can do is limit battery charging to 80%, and you have two options. Depending on your situation, you might want to use smart charging or charging limit. You cannot use both anyway. And charging limit just sets the limit to 80%. If you charge your phone, you won't be able to charge more than 80%. And that's that's just all. And if you have smart charging enabled, then the phone can automatically block charging at 80%. And if you have a charging pattern, meaning that if you always charge your phone at the same time of the day, most of the time, then the phone can recognize when you are about to unplug the charger in, let's say, half an hour or maybe in an hour. So when the phone learns this charging pattern, the phone can automatically block charging at 80% and then return charging to 100% when, um, when the phone recognizes, like I said, and that you are about to unplug the charger. So definitely worth trying out. Of course, this option won't work immediately as the phone needs to learn these patterns. So you might want to give it a, a, some time. We also have resume charging at 95%, which is another option that can be enabled, especially if you don't want to use any of these two. And this one allows you to automatically stop charging um, the battery when it's at 100%. And so when you reach 100%, the battery stops charging. And when you drop down to 95%, it starts charging again to 100%. So this can, this at least this one should be enabled if you don't want to use these 80% limits. And the reason uh, you may be wondering why you might want to use these 80% limits, the answer is quite simple. Most of the smartphones nowadays use or are optimized in such a way that 80% is the perfect spot for batteries. So you should stop charging at 80% and start charging at 20. This is the ideal percentage, the perfect range for batteries nowadays. All right. So besides that, we also have the charging settings where we have the fast charging, which is called smart rapid charging. If you consider fast charging to be um, not so great for batteries in general, then of course you can turn it off. However, if you don't have any opinion about that, then of course you can still use it. Or if you believe that it doesn't really matter if you have this option on or off, then well, feel free to turn it on or off. Uh, but I just want to show you where you can find fast charging. All right. Now, besides that, you can also find the information later on about the battery usage by apps. So here you can find out which apps use the most battery. All right. So battery settings are done. The next thing that I want to show you is in location, actually. And in here, if you go to Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth scanning, you can make sure that these two options are disabled. You don't want to have them enabled all the time. If there is a situation where the phone wants it, requires it, these scanning options to be enabled, then of course you will be asked to turn it on. But you want to keep this off for as long as possible uh, because they can drain the battery a little bit. And frankly speaking, then 
they uh, really don't have to be enabled all the time. So definitely worth turning off. Besides that, you can go to display and the brightness as these settings also have an impact on the battery, um, battery life and battery draining. For example, dark mode uses less battery. Of course, the difference isn't that high compared to some other options, but of course, it also has an impact. Dark mode can extend the battery life slightly. If you are not a fan of dark mode, then you can create a schedule where the dark mode will be autom uh, automatically enabled at a given time, at a selected time. We also have brightness settings for screen brightness, of course, so you can use automatic brightness. The more brightness you have, the more battery you also use. And if you use extra brightness, then you also have increased battery usage. So you might consider turning it off and decrease screen brightness in that case. Another thing is the, of course, the screen resolution. Now, over here, we can downgrade the screen resolution to standard because um, by default, we actually use high resolution. And of course, while the image is sharper, I believe that the difference isn't that noticeable. I mean, sure, you can probably spot some differences here and there, but generally speaking, if you use a lower screen res resolution, you also have longer battery life as it is written over here. And we also have the screen refresh rate option, where, of course, ideally you want to use 120 hertz because it provides much smoother experience than 60 hertz. However, since I'm talking about some tips for improving the battery life, I also have to mention this one because if we limit the uh, refresh rate to 60 hertz, we also increase the battery, well, we limit the battery consumption, we increase the battery life, we improve it. Now, of course, I understand that it can be quite annoying or inconvenient to uh, use 60 hertz. So, well, I'm also not a fan of 60 hertz, so I can completely understand if you still want to use 120 hertz. All right, I think in terms of display and the brightness, it is all that I wanted to mention. In wallpapers and style, we also have always on display, which also has or um, causes the battery to be more battery consuming. Well, this option is battery consuming, but this is what I'm trying to say. So you might consider turning this option off, especially if you don't really use it, if you don't care about AOD. It's, I'm not sure if it's actually enabled by default, I think not, but you might have enabled it um, at some point and you may have forgotten about it. So uh, you can uh, just turn it off and save some battery. And we also have edge lighting, which can also slightly increase the battery consumption when we use it. In my case, it is actually disabled, um, but you can turn it off if you actually use it. Uh, unless, of course, you do want to use it. But of course, this is just a tip. All right. And I think that's all in terms of settings. And what is also quite important is, of course, all of these features that we can find in the quick settings or the control center, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, location itself, of course, because these features and NFC as well, and because these features also use the battery quite a bit. Ideally, if you are, let's say, outside of your home, if you are outside somewhere, if you don't have Wi-Fi at a given moment or you don't need to use it, then you want to turn off Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi itself uses some battery so you can turn it off when you don't use it. The same goes with Bluetooth. If no Bluetooth device is connected at a given moment, there is no reason to keep it enabled and this can also save you the battery. And the same uh, story with... Um, with the mobile data, with location, and of course NFC. Well, with location, we can say that it is actually advised to use it all the time, especially, of course, if you use uh, such features as Find My Device or the Find Hub, so that your phone can always be tracked down uh, in case it is stolen or lost. All right, so I think that's about it. This is everything that I wanted to mention. If there is something that I missed in this video, then of course you can share it in the comments. You can share your opinions as well. So uh, leave a like and subscribe. If you're looking for some information about Realme GT7T, then be sure to check out my channel. 
And if you're looking for some guides for this phone, then you can visit my channel as well, as I have a bunch of tutorials for this phone.